Dope. You got, oh, man, oh, man, 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 if I ever see that shit in person, Halloween or not, I'm running to my feet bleed, and then some. I was making my way home to Florida from North Carolina, where I had just signed a lease for a house that I was planning to move my family to. Originally, I had planned to fly home, but I decided to make a trip out of it and rented a car to go back home on the open road. This way, I could get used to the drive before having to make it in a moving truck. The car that I rented was leagues nicer than the car that I owned back in Florida, so I was really enjoying all the amenities. From the amazing heated steering wheel to the booming loud system. But what started out as an amazing trip quickly turned into a terrifying one. It was around 11.30 at night and I was driving through a small city that I had passed on the highway. At first I thought it was a really nice area. My opinion quickly changed after I continued down the highway. At that time at night, the roads weren't quite empty but there wasn't any traffic to worry about. So when a car pulled out in front of me on the highway, I thought nothing of it. I also didn't think anything of the car that had begun tailgating me. Sure, it was annoying, but I figured it was just a bad driver or something. But when the third car pulled up on the left side of me, I got the suspicion that something was up. As we began to approach the off-ramp, I noticed the car next to me was slowly sliding into my lane, forcing me onto the exit ramp. Damn. The cars in front and behind me worked in unison to keep me driving a bit until out of nowhere, the car in front stopped. I waited for someone to hop out of the car because I knew that I was in a bad situation, but I must have been focusing too hard on what was happening in front of me. I didn't notice a guy get out of the car behind me and approach my passenger side with a gun point in my direction. He told me to unlock the door. I quickly complied, and he was inside before I could react at all. The gun was pressed to the side of my face as the man used one hand to grab my phone and wallet out of my pockets. He then forced me out of the car, hopped over to the driver's seat, and the thieving caravan drove off. It all happened in a matter of minutes, but it felt like I had the cold barrel of that gun to my head for hours. I made a police report and ended up having to pay a fee to the rental car company. I still run that incident back in my head sometimes to wonder what I could have done differently, but at least I escaped with my life. Barely, Jesus. If you remember the blizzard of 1978, you likely remember being trapped in your home for a period of time. Well, I was one of the unlucky people that happened to be on the road when the storm hit. I'll never forget how determined I was to make it home. I knew that if I just drove carefully and took my time, I could be home with my family and anything that happened after that would be fine. My plans for being with my family during that dire time stopped dead in their tracks as soon as I had to stop between a line of traffic as far as the eye could see. I had been driving on Route 128, and by the time I had gotten about 30 minutes from my house, all of the other people driving home had gotten stuck behind a pileup. We all began walking around our cars and down the road trying to figure out if there was anything that could be done. But as the cars continued to line up behind us, it was clear none of us were going anywhere. There was no telling how long the storm was going to last, so most of us just huddled up inside of our cars, running the heaters as much as we could to survive the cold temperature as the snow piled around us. After a few hours, I couldn't even open my car to leave it. It was then that I noticed that my gas was getting close to being low, so I knew that I had to start rationing it. 
I turned my car off and did my best to keep warm with my own body heat. I could feel my fingers and toes tightening up along with all of the muscles in my body as I clutched my shoulders with arms crossed and soon the cold was too much to bear. I had to turn my car on. I turned the key and could hear the sound of the engine trying to turn over, but there was no starting it. I tried over and over, but the damn thing just wouldn't turn on. I didn't know what to do. All I knew was that I had to keep warm. I didn't get freed from my freezing cold icebox for nearly 24 hours. Damn! When I was Holy shit! I did not make that noise. I did not edit that noise in. That was a weird ass noise. I don't know what the hell that was. What the hell? What the fuck was that? 24 hours of being cold. Oh my God. Out by complete strangers. Needless to say that my car was stuck there until we could drive on the roads again. But at least I could keep warm in the house of the strangers that saved me and five other groups that were trapped that day. That blizzard took the lives of about 100 people, 14 of which were trapped in their cars, just like me. Oh my God. Oh my God, Jesus. After spending about a week with my family in Dallas, my girlfriend and I began making our long trip back to New York. It was supposed to be a 40 hour drive, but we spent one night at a Red Roof Inn to split up the drive a bit. The entire way we both alternated with each of us taking turns as the driver. All in all, it was a really enjoyable trip at first. We stopped whenever we needed to and made sure to stay stocked on road snacks. Things took a turn for the worse though. It was our second night of driving after stopping at a red roof. The plan was to drive through the night and by around 4 p.m. the next day, we would be back in New York. Sure, we would be tired, but at least we would be sleeping in our own bed. It was my turn to drive, and as I continued down the highway, I could feel myself losing focus and almost drifting off. So instead of waking up Diana and asking her to take over, I made a dumb decision. I figured I could get off the highway and use the GPS to take some smaller roads. At least then, I would have to focus on all the turns the GPS would be having me make. Honestly, it worked like a charm. As I found myself keeping an eye out for street signs, I was more focused and therefore more awake. The road we were on had no street lights on it. The only illumination was coming from my car as I drove along. I'll never forget the feeling that came over me as I began to round the bend that was up ahead of us. On the right side of the road, all you could see was high-reaching cornfields, and to the left was an open field that separated the road from the tree line. As we rounded the bend, Diana was woken up as she flew forward in her seat. All you could hear in the car were the sounds of the tires screeching on the asphalt. Diana was confused and asked me what was going on, and all I could do was point. She followed my fingers and was shocked at what was standing in the middle of the road in the center of our headlights. There was a single man who appeared to be wearing a thick looking jacket, even though it was nearly 75 degrees outside. Neither of us knew what to do. The man just stood there and stared at us as we sat there frozen. That was when I noticed Maybe I missed it, but how about just going around, you know, or through him? I don't know. You know, break his ankles, kneecaps, legs, torso. I don't know. You either go through him or around him. Jesus. It's really not that hard. It's really simple if we think about it. What was dangling down from his right hand, he was wielding a large blade looking object. I couldn't quite make out whether it was a large knife or a small chopping blade like a machete and we didn't care to find out either. All I could think to do 
was throw the car in reverse and make a quick turnaround. As soon as the man heard me throw the car into gear, he began moving toward the two of us. I slammed my foot on the gas and waited till we were far enough away to begin turning around. As we peeled away, I could see the man getting close to our taillights through the review mirror. But as we began to put distance between us, all I could hear was a loud banging on the trunk. I looked in the mirror and didn't see anything. So Diana and I just drove as fast as we could to the nearest gas station that looked open. After making sure it was safe to stop, I got out of the car to take a look at the trunk. That was when I saw an indent in the trunk that looked like something pointed had hit it. All I can think is that he either threw his knife at us as we drove away, or he managed to get close enough to hit the car when we turned around. Either way, we were both glad to be out of that situation, and we got home as fast as we could. Hey Amen. Do I want this one? With the blizzard? 24 hours. 24 hours of being freezing. I know there was some sort of pain that you felt. Yeah, it had to be. It had to be. Oh my God. What's hypothermia? Is that like when you when you're like so cold that your body thinks it's warm or it's hot? So you just take off clothes or something? Is that called hypothermia? I don't know. I don't know what it's called. But Yeah, if it's snowing bad, bad, I'm not, I'm not leaving the house. I'm not, just saying. Keep it cold, keep it classy, and I love you, stay happy, my family.